This is a math story that I call the true history of logarithms. With Socrates and Amphibianes. The part of Socrates will be played by you. And the part of Amphibianes will be played by himself. Through painstaking research, I have traced the beginnings of logarithms to ancient Greece. I have discovered a lost manuscript about the greatest philosopher of all time. Though long since forgotten, at one time he was so great that people called him Socrates. This manuscript describes a dialogue between Socrates and one of his students, Amphibianes, who was always hopping all over him with questions. Throughout the following reconstructed dialogue, Notice how Socrates employs the Socratic method by which the student is brought to knowledge through queries such as, what's so great about that? Now remember, you are playing the part of Socrates and Amphibianes is playing the part of himself. I will help you with the Socrates part, but make sure that you join in at the appropriate time. Oh, great, Socrates. I want to learn the secrets of power. To have the secret lily hopper, you must first understand power. What's to understand? Isn't it obvious? Power is strength. I looked it up at the library in Alexandria. And where do you find strength? Strength is found in numbers. I think Aesop said so. What kind of numbers, Tadpole? Any kind, even those with bad attitudes. Here, let me show you. The most holy number, of course, is zero. And then there are those with good attitudes like three, one, and two, and those with bad attitudes like negative three, negative one, and negative two. But where is the power in the numbers? Well, they need a power base, you know, like the politicians at the Acropolis. Let's say we have a power base of two, then two to the zero power is one. Why? I don't know. It's a math thing. And 2 to the first power is 2. Why? Because you've got 1, 2, I guess. I better cross these out so I don't lose my place. Anyway, 2 to the 2 power is 4. And 2 to the third power is 8. Why? Uh, it's a multiplication thing. Now, the numbers with the bad attitudes are like people who accept compliments but never give any back. You have to force them to uh, reciprocate. So, 2 to the negative first power is 1 half, and 2 to the negative second power is 1 fourth, and 2 to the negative third power is 1 eighth. Hey, I'm swamped. What I need to do is organize this. How do you organize pairs of numbers? Glad you asked. <clears throat> I got a person in my throat. Uh, I'll call the horizontal axis the x-axis, so x will represent the questions, the numbers I put in. Why x? Because of those are the numbers that I x'd out, and I'll call the vertical axis the y-axis. Why? Exactly! No, why? Yes, why? because all of your wise questions. These will be the answers that come out. Then I connect the ordered pairs to get a picture like this. A curve. Cool. All I have to do is remember that X's are the questions and Y's are the answers. I thought Y was a question. Nope. Y is the answer. I guarantee. So what? so great about that? Well, any power base which is greater than 1 will have exactly the same way. In general, if y equals a to the x, where a is greater than 1, then the y's are always positive, so the graph will always be above the x-axis. Why does this have to do, what does this have to do with power? Don't you see? This spawns a stream of possibilities. I can find any power of 2 by going along the graph, for example, if I want to find 2 to the 1.5, I can estimate it by going 1.5 along the x-axis and then up to about 3. Aren't you green with envy? Suppose I were to ask 
what power of two is equal to eight? Simple. I just go up the y-axis until you get eight and see that it matches with the value three on the x-axis. But then x is the answer and y is the question. Oh, you are a slippery one, aren't you? I said y is always the answer, didn't I? Hmm, that's a stumper. The problem is that you switch the roles of the two axes. So let's see what happens if I interchange the variables. You are actually asking me to find the graph x equals two to the y because you wanted eight equals two to the y and I have to find y. So what would the graph look like? The same, only different. Just interchange all the x and y values in the graph of y equals two to the x to get x equals two to the y. So zero one becomes one zero, one two becomes two one, et cetera, et cetera. The graph looks the same, except we have flipped each point over the line y equals x, kind of like leapfrog. So the graphs are mirror images of one another. What would you call such a graph? How about the leap over graph? Because that is how I made it. So what's so great about that? Well, when any power base, which is greater than one, will have a leap over graph that is just the mirror image across the line y equals x. Is there anything special about these graphs, oh, flat-footed one? Let me see. Since eight equals two to the third, we can say three equals the leap over graph base two of eight. Let's abbreviate this, three equals log base two of eight. Then for example, one half equals two to the negative first because negative one equals log base two of a half. And what is the result of this? Well, if you take eight times a half equals two to the third times two to the negative first equals two to the three plus negative one power, then we can rewrite this as three plus negative one equals log base two of eight times a half. Any, and why the explanation point bug-eyed one? If I substitute log base two back in place of three and log base two of a half back in place of negative one, I get log base two of eight plus log base two of a half equals log base two of eight times a half. In other words, the log of the product is equal to the sum of the logs of the factors. Always? You got it, Ace. Log base B of X times Y equals log base B of X plus log base B of Y. I guarantee. If multiplication turns to addition, what does division turn into? Subtraction. Log base B of X over y is equal to log base b of x minus log base b of y. But weed hopper, if multiplication turns to addition and division turns to subtraction, what would exponentiation change to? Hmm, well, log base b of x to the n equals log base b of x times x times x and times, which by the product rule is log base b of x plus log base b of x plus log base b of x and times, What's so great about that? That means that log base b of x to the n is equal to n times log base b of x. Exponentiation becomes multiplication. Hey, I can really get into this logarithmic. But what about the secret power that you were asking? Who cares? This has been such a riveting discussion. I can't wait to go back to my pad and see if these ideas float. Gotta go now. If it's okay, bye you, TTFN. And that is the true history of logarithms. Honest.